Hey everyone, it's good to be with you. We have a really challenging topic, at least it's challenging for me. We're gonna talk about settling for a partial victory as opposed to the full victory that God has promised. Is that something that you struggle with? I know it is certainly something I've experienced and I struggle with. I think sometimes I'm afraid that God's gonna disappoint me or not come through, so I stop short. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Just give me a moment just to welcome everyone. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. I run a ministry called RHM International. And you know, my heart is to see the body of Christ really raised up and set free. I'm a preacher's kid. I'm also now a pastor. And so I minister around the world. And so often I see the body of Christ stopping short, or maybe we could say settling for a partial victory when God has called us to run the race with endurance. So that's what I'm all about is equipping the body of Christ to run the race with endurance so that we can get the prize that, that the Lord has for us and just that relationship with him and the wonder of who he is and who he created me to be, who he created you to be. So if you wanna learn more, just go to ruthhendrickson.org and you'll find all sorts of resources. Okay, that little went a little longer, but you know, you are created with a plan and a purpose. God has good things for you. And we can't afford to stop short, right? We cannot afford to, in our own personal lives, to have a partial victory when God's called us to have a full victory. And we certainly cannot afford to see that in the body of Christ because we're here on a mission and we need to represent the kingdom of heaven in this world. In fact, we're called to bring heaven to earth. Amen. Okay, so. Here's, here's the question again, are there areas in my life or that I've experienced, I mean, we can look back and just ask the Lord for forgiveness and to teach us where we've settled for a partial victory. Have you ever settled for a partial victory when God has actually told you to press through and to get the fullness of the whole victory? Because here's the thing, as I looked at this from God's perspective, this is not to put shame, it's not to put guilt or condemnation on any of us, okay? But when we look at it from God's perspective, from a heavenly perspective, whenever we settle for just a partial victory, we've actually settled for defeat. And as I looked at that, I was like, oh my goodness, like that just hit me so hard because when I, you know, I can be happy with my partial victory. And I can convince myself that it's okay, but it doesn't mean that it lines up with what the word of the Lord says. And if that's the case, if that partial victory doesn't line up, then guess what? I've fallen short. I've quit before the race is over. I used to run marathons and you know what? If you don't complete, if you don't cross the finish line, you don't get the medal. All right, you might have the shirt from the marathon, but you don't get the medal. That's a partial, partial victory, okay? Oh, I didn't run 26.2, but I ran 26. Okay. That that little bit of endurance to push over the finish line makes all the difference in the world. So we have to be come to a point, we have to come to a point where we are actually unwilling to settle for a partial victory because. God has told us to have a full victory, which means when it seems like we're only part way there and we haven't seen the fullness of something, we don't stop. We don't, we don't quit contending. So how often do you stop short? How often do I stop short? How often do we quit contending because we don't see the results in the time frame that we want? Amen. Can you relate? Okay. How often do we get tired and just give up? And how often do we just settle for good enough or less than? I know I'm certainly guilty. And if, if it's a huge personal challenge for us, okay, for you and for me, if it's a challenge, then we can really be assured that it's also a challenge for the body of Christ. Why? Because individuals such as you and such as me make up the body of Christ. So it's really, I feel, an important question to ask. In what areas have I stopped short? And, you know, as they come to mind, again, it doesn't bring, it should not bring shame or condemnation. You just go before the throne room of grace. You ask the Lord to teach you and to forgive you for stopping short and to set us free. So let's go to 2 Kings. We're going to go to chapter 13, verses 14 to 19. So if you have your, if you have your Bibles, just grab them. So again, 2 Kings 13, verses 14 to 19. When Elisha became sick with the illness of which he was to die, Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over him and said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. Elisha said to him, 
take a bow and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hands on that bow. And he put his hands on it. Then Elisha laid his hands over the king's hand. He said, open the window towards the east. He opened it. And Elijah said, shoot. So he, he shot. And he said, the Lord's arrow of victory, even the arrow of, of victory over our Aram, for you will defeat the, uh, <laughs> man. So you will defeat the Arminians of Apec until you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And then he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he took those arrows. Okay, if these are the arrows, he took the arrows and he struck the ground three times and he stopped. He just stopped three times. Okay, he wasn't told the number to strike the ground. He was just told to strike the ground. Remember that. But the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Aram until you would have destroyed it. But now you shall strike Aram only three times. Okay, he stopped. He wasn't told specifically how far to go. I want to say he probably did what he felt when he was, well, okay, two things. Number one, I think he did probably what he felt was expected. I think he probably felt what, or did what he was comfortable with. And I think that he probably didn't realize the significance or the power of the prophetic action to break through into the fullness of victory. Because he didn't step into the fullness of the moment, which was all a prophetic action, he did not receive the fullness of victory, which God had intended. The prophet realized that and got angry because he knew that King Joash was going to fall short. He was going to be defeated much earlier than he needed to be because he had settled for a partial victory. Now, you might say, okay, well, he didn't tell him how many times to hit the ground. That's, that's very true. But, you know, when we, when we have a prophetic word or a prophetic action, we only understand in part, okay, there's a fullness of fruition that has to come. So, therefore, we keep contending until the Lord says to stop contending. Okay, we never stop at our three if we haven't heard a word from the Lord to say stop. So we keep pushing, we keep contending because it, even the prayers, the attitude, the prophetic actions, the, the uh, marinating in what God has said, standing on his word and refusing to budge, all will eventually bring breakthrough. We cannot afford to settle for a partial victory. Okay, I am contending to see a lot of illnesses healed, uh, both physically and emotionally. I'm also contending to see the dead raised to life. Have I seen it yet? No, it seems like there's defeat after defeat after defeat with the dead being raised. I have seen physical things healed, absolutely. I've seen a lot of emotional healing because that's the primary area I work in. Um, so, so let me just clarify, we've seen a lot of emotional healing. I'm contending for more. I'm not going to stop short with what we've seen. Okay, I've seen a fair amount of physical healing. I'm not going to stop short because not only do I want to see the physical fully healed, I also want to see the dead raised. So that aligns with the word of God. So I cannot, I rejoice every single victory, but I cannot settle for the partial. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I'm sure King Joash, the three times that he went and he defeated um, the army of Aram, I'm sure he rejoiced. But he didn't get to rejoice times four, five, and six because he had stopped short with the prophetic action. He had stopped short of the fullness of God's plan, and it actually cost him those victories. So Graham Cook makes, makes a comment with the story that catches my attention. He says, the enemy can prevent the victory, but he can also downsize it. It is our wholehearted response that makes us more than conquerors. It means that we can't just win the fight. We occupy the territory 
afterwards. And that's really important to me because I began to realize again um, that we can we could say, okay, I won the battle, but how do I occupy? How do I keep that ground? And I want to even take it past what what Graham Cook said here and that he said we occupy the territory. I fully agree with that. I also believe that we take the plunder. So we take areas around it also. And so there's so much more that goes into this. What does it mean to occupy the territory? Well, it means that you bring in your rule and your reign, which means we bring heaven's rule and heaven's reign. Okay, we occupy that. In other words, the demonic can no longer have it. There's, there's, there can't be a partial defeat. We can't form alliances with the enemy thinking that we've won the war because that's only a partial victory and a partial victory is ultimately defeat. So that takes us into the very current culture and at the risk of meddling, let me just ask, where have you formed alliances with the enemy thinking that you're keeping peace and having the victory? What about in areas of sexuality? What about in areas of um, even the way that you speak? Let's, let's make it real, real general. Have, have you, um, formed alliances with with compromise under the guise of pray for them okay that's a big one within the body of christ um what about what you're reading what you're watching are you forming alliances because it's what everyone does what about the little lies these are all things you could fill in the blanks okay across the board things that were were compromising from a from a cultural standpoint where the church has been like Maybe they've been like Joe, King Joash, we ourselves, the church, I, we're guilty of that too. We're part of that. We can't just say they, but we have compromised and only hit those arrows three times. So, so we've kind of said, okay, we're going to, um, we're going to pray for healing, but we're not going to contend for resurrection from the dead. Okay. We're going to, we're not going to um, preach about godly biblical sexuality because we might offend somebody who does not align with that mindset. Okay, we're going to give up talking about the rainbow being God's promise that he would never flood the earth again because another group has absconded with that symbolism. Okay, so what are we, you know, where are these, you wanna call them little foxes, where are they sneaking in? Where are we settling? For partial victory. How about even things like um, not being able to talk about uh, here in the United States, you know, we, we vote for our elected officials, um, whole nother story, we won't go there. But um, what I will say is how often have we been silenced as the body of Christ about even talking about voting according to Christian or biblical standards, because we might lose our nonprofit status. All right, so there's so many things where, again, if we, you know, just to keep us on track here and not go off onto another, another arena, but how many places have we settled for a partial victory when God calls us to the full victory? And that's where we need to align, realign our thinking with the, with the word of God and understand that a partial victory is actually defeat. And really go back to that story in 2 Kings 13, 14 to 19, where, where Joash only struck the ground three times. He stopped short. That prophetic action, hear me, hear me, hear me. The prophetic action, the lack of carry through, the lack of pushing through whatever, why ever he stopped at three, we don't know. All we know is that he stopped too short. So whatever the reason was behind this, this is what we know. He stopped before God said to stop. So in what areas of our life are we stopping short? You see, it's, it's really, we have to understand that we are the priests of the kingdom of heaven. You can say right now, I am a priest of the kingdom of heaven. How about I am an heir of the kingdom of heaven? Say that, I am an heir of the kingdom of heaven. You carry all power and authority. Say, I carry all power and authority. Say right now, I'm created to bring heaven to earth. Okay, I'm created to bring heaven of earth. There is a place for declaration. Okay, what if as King Joash had pounded those arrows, he had aligned with what Elisha was saying, the Lord's arrow of victory, the Lord's arrow of victory, the Lord's arrow of victory, the Lord's arrow of victory. This is victory over Aram. Okay, what if he had began to decree and declare what God had said? What if he had just kept pounding 
and just cried out the declarations or the promises of God over his life, over the kingdom, what he understood, what Elijah was saying, what would have changed. You see, again, when Joash shot the arrow, when he shot it originally, it was a prophetic act that he would have victory, but there was follow-up. That was to strike the ground with the arrows. So again, how often do we receive, you know, the word of God, it comes like an arrow and it pierces our soul. We, we, we receive that word. Okay, but we don't contend for it. How often do we stop short? How often do we receive the word from the Lord and not understand the directives to bring it to pass in its fullness? So again, this lack of understanding, the lack of carry through, the lack of, or, okay, the lack of understanding, the lack of carry through, and the areas where we compromise will cause us to fall short of the victory that God has for us. Again, what Graham Cook said, the enemy can prevent the victory. If he can't prevent the victory, he can also downsize it. So if he can prevent our having victory, but we're pressing through, we're like, okay, I'm going to do this. He can bring in the doubt. He can bring in the discouragement. He can bring in the tiredness and cause us to stop short. Okay, he can downsize it. It's our wholehearted response that makes us more than conquerors. You are more than a conqueror. Just say that right, that right now. I am more than a conqueror. That means that we must not just win the fight, but we have to occupy the territory afterwards. You see, King Joash wasn't just meant to win the, those three battles. He was meant to occupy the territory. So what's your response to the word of God and the promises of God? Is it wholehearted? Okay, where Elijah was at. That's why he got angry because he saw that there was a shortfall there. Or is it half-hearted like where King jo Joash was at? Okay. So which is it? Which is your response? Now, I think we all have growing to do here, right? So that means we go before the throne of grace. We repent for the areas where we've fallen short. We get back on track and we begin to contend. In fact, um, I actually have some arrows here and maybe you need to purchase a few arrows and just go, Lord, I'm putting the stake in the ground. I'm going to continue to pound the ground until I see the breakthrough. I'm going to do this prophetic act because God, this is who you are. And these are your promises. This is who you are. These are your promises. And just continue to pound until you see the breakthrough. Because you are created for breakthrough. You are created to bring heaven to earth. All right, so you have your homework. Get some arrows or something to pound, pound them. Read through the 2 Kings 13, 14, and 19. Stand on the promises of God. Decree and declare the promises of God. You have a right to do that because you are a child of God. You're an heir to the kingdom of heaven. So don't stop short. Don't settle for a partial victory because a partial victory is a defeat from God's perspective, okay? So we don't want to settle for less than all that God has. So have an amazing day. Be so blessed. Again, 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 please feel free to share this. Okay, tell others about it. Put on it why it impacted you or why they should watch it. Um, with the podcast, please feel free to subscribe, rate, and review. It really, really helps. And also, if you have not done so, and you really feel like you're in a transition point, you're continuing to move forward, um, go to Amazon or go on to my site and just grab this book, Position. Um, how to be aligned and empowered to walk in your divine destiny. Not only does it take you to scripture, it gives some of my story, but it also has uh, questions at the, at the end of each chapter. We have questions, we have action steps, and we have prayer and declaration. So it could really help you to push through to that victory. So again, the title of that book is Positioned How to Be Aligned and Empowered to Walk in Your Divine Destiny. Amen, amen. That's what you're created for. So you just go for it. Have a great day and be so blessed.